Hello and back to basics, mate. This is uh, this is a video that I imagine a lot of the user base of Fusion 360 and Autodesk Inventor are going to already know, but hey, not all videos are for people that already know this stuff. Do you know what I mean? This is for people that aren't really all that sure about what all this ray tracing malarkey is, because it's a hot topic at the moment. Uh, Nvidia have just released their new graphics cards, the Turing architecture, which supports on the GPU ray tracing. And if you're out like me, your sub box is at the moment flooded with videos from your favorite tolerable nitwit gaming tech channels. They've all been sent the new ray tracing graphics cards from Nvidia. But uh, hey, we can't use GPU ray tracing in 3D CAD either. But did you know that we've been able to do ray tracing in Fusion 360 and Autodesk Inventor for quite some time? So what I'm going to do in this video is just show you what ray tracing is, how it works, and uh, what happens when, when you turn it on. That's really all this is about. It's, uh, it's not really a tutorial to, to get the best of ray tracing. It's just to let you know that it's there and, uh, and how it works. So you're looking at Fusion 360. Up here at the top left, this set of numbers here, you won't have them. It's a program called MSI Afterburner. And it plugs into your program and it tells you what's going on with your computer at any one particular point. So this top line here is my graphics card. And this number here is the percentage of the overall graphics card power that's being used. And most of that number is actually my screen recording software because that kills me graphics card. Uh, second line is the video memory. Now, every graphics card has a frame buffer. It's called VRAM. And uh, most graphics cards have got, say, 2 gig of VRAM, 4 gig. 8, 11, 16, and I'm currently using over 4 gig of video RAM. So take a look at your graphics card, see how much video RAM you've got. And if you've got less than 4 gig, if you've got less than 2 gig, you might be struggling, mate, because these days programs take up a lot of video RAM. All I've got open is Fusion 360, Inventor, PowerPoint, Screen Recording Software, Outlook, and Notepad. And I'm using over 4 gig of VRAM. Go figure. Uh, the third line is the CPU. Currently using 11% of that. It's an i7-8700K at stock settings. We're going to see that jump around quite a bit, but I'll point that out when we come to it. The fourth line is System RAM. I'm using 16 gig of System RAM, mate. All I've got open is Fusion 360 and Inventor with a small assembly. That's madness. Absolute madness. And then the last line is frames per second, which is a metric you can use to see how smooth uh, things are in 3D CAD. So currently, Fusion 360 is rendering 136 frames to my screen per second. And uh, if you use a 3D mouse, did you know it enables V-Sync? So it actually locks the frame rate to 60 or 30 frames per second when you use a 3D mouse. But if you use manual panning and orbiting, it's a little bit smoother. But uh, yeah, right. So uh, ray tracing. We can turn this on in Fusion 360 by going to the model button and then render. And uh, I've taken a look around and I can't actually see the words ray tracing referenced anywhere, but it actually is doing it. And uh, the way this works, right, ray tracing, it's, it's in the name. It's tracing rays of light. There'll be other sources on YouTube and elsewhere on the internet that'll explain this far better than I can. But in our scene, our model is lit by what's called an IBL, it's an image-based light. So the scene itself is like a spherical image, and where the light areas are, Fusion 360 treats that as a light source. That light source is emitting light rays, those light rays will then bounce off of the object and then into the camera. As they enter the camera, they're bouncing off of all of the objects, and where you see light bouncing off of objects onto other objects, you'll see reflections where light can't really get at, that's where you see shadows. And when ray tracing is disabled, you just don't get any of that. That's what's that's what we're seeing right now. I've added an, an exaggerated reflective texture to this wheel. So you should be seeing a ton of reflections in here, mate, but there's absolutely none because life's not ray traced right now. <laughs> so we're not seeing it. Uh, the shadows, they're pretty rudimentary. Uh, Fusion 360 and most 3D CAD programs can sort of rasterize fake shadows into the scene. Uh, they're approximate shadows. Uh, but when you turn on ray tracing, you get accurate, well, say accurate, roughly accurate shadows. Don't forget, right, this is 3D CAD. It's not 3D Studio Max. It's not Keyshot. It's not Blender. It's not a high-end uh, visualization package. So don't expect too much from the ray tracing. But in Fusion 360, we've got two ray tracing modes. If you go into this cog here, you've got fast and you've got advanced. Fast will ray trace the scene pretty quickly because you don't just click the button and it happens immediately. It does ray tracing in iterations. It does it in passes. And it'll, it'll trace the rays of light over time to fine tune and clear up the image. And uh, if, you, if you've selected the fast button, it does it quicker, but it doesn't look as good. If you select advanced, 
it takes a lot longer but it'll look a lot better so we'll click fast and to turn on ray tracing, it's dead simple, mate. You just click this button here. You might have been doing it all along and you might not have even known it was actually ray tracing that was going on. But yeah, you click this button here. And now look at that. We've now got reflections because the rays of light from the light source are now bouncing off of all the textures and into the camera. And where light's bouncing off of one face onto another face and into the camera. It's where you can see your reflections, mate. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's ray tracing. Also to note is that nothing is happening on the graphics card. Currently, the graphics card utilization is still roughly what it was before I even turned on ray tracing. That's my screen recording software going mental. Uh, but it's the CPU. All of the ray tracing calculations are done on the CPU. And it's exactly the same in Autodesk Inventor. If we hop on over to that and then turn on ray tracing, Inventor's got three ray tracing levels. It's got uh, low draft and high is what it's got but again it's all done on the cpu all the calculations are uh, are all cpu based and finally you're not supposed you're not supposed to do any modeling whilst ray tracing is activated uh, you can do in inventor but you'd be mental to do that because when you start turning the camera this starts happening because essentially ray tracing it disables itself as you're moving the camera uh, the reflections you can just about see them they're updating in the uh, in the textures, but you you can't do anything with it. When you stop moving around, that's when it starts calculating all the ray passes. Uh, but we can see it actually pretty well, actually, in uh, in Inventor here. If I disable ray tracing, you see this uh, chrome heat pipe here. It's currently reflecting the environment image. That's it. It's not reflecting anything else. We've got this big red shroud hovering over this chrome pipe here, but we can't see any reflections because life's not ray traced. But when you turn on ray tracing, you'll be able to see the red reflections of that shroud bouncing off of that pipe and then into the camera. And uh, that's uh, that's a good indication of ray tracing in action. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's Inventor and that's Fusion 360. You can use it. It's all CPU bound. Nothing's happening on the GPU. To get the best out of ray tracing, you need, it's it's one of the few areas of Autodesk's 3D CAD suites which utilizes multi-cores. It just grabs, it goes all the cores, all out, 100%, plows it all into ray tracing. So the more cores you've got, the faster they are, the faster the ray tracing will happen. But even with the most highest of high-end CPUs available on the market today, nothing is going to happen instantaneously. It will take a while to finish. Uh, it just happens quicker. The more cores you've got and the faster they happen to be. But there you go. In canvas rendering is indeed ray tracing. And uh, that's fast. And then if you switch it over to advanced, you, I mean, it, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. It's never going to look photorealistic, but it doesn't look too bad. Fusion 360, by the way, someone's going to point this out. Fusion 360 does have the ability to render the image in the cloud using what desk's cloud servers at the expense of your cloud credits, mate. But uh, you, you can do a, a render yourself using your own hardware using uh, in canvas rendering or this little teapot button here. I've never understood why it's a teapot, but uh, there you are. There you are. Right, that's it, mate. That's it. We can ray trace on the CPU in 3D CAD. Uh, hopefully, in the future, Autodesk will, uh, will pull the thumbs out and implement it pretty swiftly into 3D CAD. But I wouldn't hold your breath. I wouldn't buy a ray tracing card just for that. Buy it because it's mint. And you might like a few games with it in the future, but don't expect 3D CAD to support GPU ray tracing anytime soon. If anybody's going to support it, it'll be the Autodesk Vred team or the 3D Studio Max team. They'll probably they're probably working on it already, to be honest. But um, 3D CAD, I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. It's just not a priority in 3D CAD. But uh, yeah, that'll do, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, hit like, you know what I mean? Uh, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, I've got a Patreon going. Once I've got my Autodesk University class all done and dusted, I'm going to start concentrating fully on getting Patreon-specific content over and done. So uh, yeah, if you want to be part of that, then uh, go head on over to Patreon and help support the channel, mate, because uh, the more supporters I get, the more time I've got to do videos like this. That's the way it goes, mate. Reet, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodle!